Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today we are playing Pokemon Indigo League, the game where you play as Ash Ketchum throughout the first season of the Pokemon anime. Let's get into it. So, starting things off, you are dreaming in bed just like Ash does in the original anime, thinking of either Bulbasaur, Charmander or Squirtle as his starter Pokemon. We all know what happens next though, he oversleeps and ends up not being able to pick any of them. So you wake up in bed and then, dude, I don't know what Ash has been doing, but he is swole man, he is looking massive, he has been doing shoulder days left, right and centre, my guy is jacked. Anyway, you leave your, look at that back, Jesus Christ, leaving the house though, you then see Gary come down to his adoring fans talking about them all he's already got his starter pokemon you push through the crowd and start talking to gary and as you can see he's just basically telling you how he's got his starter pokemon ready it's nice to have a grandfather in the business he picked the best one i'm late all this stuff and then he pops off in his car and drives off to viridian city after that we head north to professor oak's lab and we are greeted by professor oak outside of his lab and he's talking about how we're ready for bed etc all that stuff and then after that we go to the lab and as you can see we actually have the pokeball icons in the kind of dispenser thing here which looks really cool it, like opens up and stuff obviously all the pokemon are already taken which isn't great but then in the middle pops up pikachu's pokeball with a little Little lightning bolt as well like the actual details that this game has is kind of crazy anyway pikachu jumps out of the pokeball and then we go and hug him and as we all know he electrocutes us and what's even crazier about this rom hack is the sprite also changes and that you have like your bed head because obviously you've just been electrocuted and your actual sprite is that for the next little bit of the game it's actually really really cool anyway after that he gives us our pokeballs he gives us our pokedex and we walk out of the lab greeted by delia our mum still with our bed head and she's basically just talking Talking about how she's so proud of us for being a Pokemon trainer. And then she just starts running around like a crazy woman. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Next up, Pikachu obviously comes out of his Pokeball. He's on the side of us. And she's just telling him how he's a little bit weird. He electrocutes everybody, just like he does in the Pokemon anime. Professor Oak tells us that rubber gloves will be useful. We then change into our actual outfit. I absolutely love the sprite of Ash in this game. We can now run as well, which is really, really cool. And we can kind of explore Pallet Town. After that, we move to the right. And as you can see, Pikachu just does not like being with us at all. Ash is just trying his best to get him on his side. And then Pidgey pops up in the grass. And Ash says, basically, this is the time that he's going to catch a Pokemon. We then have to go up throw the Pokeball at the Pidgey, but then it breaks out and then hits us with a big old whirlwind or sand attack or whatever and sends us flying to the right. Pikachu is just laughing. He's using emojis to laugh at us. Can't believe it. How dare he? Next up though, Spearow does attack us and we actually have to battle the Spearow. Pikachu does listen to us though, which was something I was a bit unsure about going into this battle. You can just one shot the Spearow though. It's a really easy battle. However though, he then gets all his boys over and we have to literally run and they actually just keep moving to you. I don't know what happens if you just stop moving completely but I didn't want to try it out because I was a little bit scared of all these Sparrow jumping at me. Next up, we have to jump off the cliff into the water as the Sparrows still fall down. We are now underwater. We're actually diving and I really, really like the sprite for this as well. We have a Magikarp there, a Shelda. And then we go to the right. And just like it happens in the anime, a Gyarados goes right up to you. And Ash is literally like, that was close. Like, that's actually really, really cool from the anime. And then, obviously, we see Pikachu. We see the hook from the fishing rod from Misty. She pulls us up. There's her bicycle. It's not the normal bike you see in the Pokemon game. It's just like a... It looks a little bit weird in this game. It looks like it shouldn't be there. Anyway, we're robbing it. And we're cycling through the rain, through the storm. But then, of course, we crash... The bike's been exploded or whatever. We can't use it anymore. All the Sparrow are coming out. Ash is telling Pikachu to get in the Pokeball. And he's like, I'm going to be the world's strongest trainer. I'm going to catch all of you. All the Look how many Sparrow there are. Jesus, man. They are coming to attack me. But then Pikachu jumps on my shoulder, electrocutes all of them. They all die. And then after that, we go up and see Ho-Oh flying throughout the sky, which is a really, really cool uh, little thing there. As we all know, it is what happens on the first day of the Pokemon anime. After that, we make our way to Viridian City. Pikachu is still very, very injured. We are greeted by Officer Jenny, who tells us where the Pokemon Center is, because obviously we need to heal. And then she lets us go in the car, and then we literally travel like two meters. I mean, really happy I got a lift there. Wouldn't have been able to make that journey myself. Anyway, we get to the Pokemon Center. There's a shadow in the sky, which is, of course, Team Rocket's uh, blimp. And then we get to heal Nurse Joy. She has a bit of a go at us because she's uh, like, we've allowed this Pikachu to get in this bad condition. She's not happy. And then, obviously, Officer Jenny tells us to look out for these different kind of... Uh, 
I guess, evil people. She's obviously talking about Team Rocket. We then get to call our mum, Delia, and then we get to call uh, Professor Oak as well. But we actually have the kind of symbol of the legendary Pokemon that are in the original anime, which is really, really cool. But yeah, Professor Oak just starts talking off one of them. I don't really know what's going on here. But it uses like images from the anime, which is also pretty cool. Pikachu was just also on the background there, just chilling with like saliva in his mouth because he was just needing the healing. And then Misty bursts through the Pokemon Center doors with her bike. And she's basically telling us that we need to pay for it. But she's letting us off a little bit because Pikachu's injured. But then... Team Rocket blast through the door with their Ekans and coughing, and they start doing their normal intro. We know the words by now. They've been doing it for a very, very long time. Make it double, all that good stuff. And then after that, we actually have to battle them. So James steps up, and I really like the James sprite as well. You can see the amount of detail that's been put into this ROM hack or fan game or whatever you want to call it. And then anyway, the coughing comes out. We've got Pikachu. We do take it out, and then Ekans goes and kills the power, and then it just comes up with play and talk and cancel. I don't know what's going on, but Pikachu just wants to be paired. I'm like, Pikachu... This ain't the time, you know, the Pokemon Center is being taken over by Team Rocket. I'll help you out later. And then, of course, all the Pikachu jump down. Pika Power activates. We get the Thundershock Team Rocket. They're blasting off again. And that's basically uh, Team Rocket's first kind of introduction into the anime. We finish that part of the story and then we move on to Viridian Forest. Because we need to start catching some Pokemon. We ain't got any yet. We need to get a Cappy and stuff like that. We then move up to this kind of house here, which is the entrance to Viridian Forest. And he gives us five repels, which is very nice. Misty starts talking about how she hates bug Pokemon and she doesn't want to go this way. We then move up and find Caterpie on this tree stump. And he, obviously, Misty's not happy about it. She's saying, ooh, and all that. And then we just catch it. We don't actually have to battle it. We just get a free Caterpie, which was pretty cool. I don't know why. There's basically a ton of other Pokemon that pop up in this game in the grass. There's, like, overworld encounters in this game. And I caught a Caterpie before, thinking I had to catch it. But then we found this one anyway. And then after that, we also find Pidgeotto as well. Um, he just pops up out of the grass. It's not a very high level, but either way, obviously, we have to catch the Pidgeotto as well. You've got to keep the team exactly the same as Ashy Boys through the Indigo League. So, obviously, Pidgeotto pops up, and we then actually have to battle this one. Dexter just kind of tells us about the Pidgeotto and stuff. Um, so, yeah, we have to battle this. No idea why we didn't have to battle the Caterpie, but we have to battle the Pidgeotto. So, very easy to catch. I'm not sure if it's 100% catch record or whatever, but we just Thundershock it, and then we just throw a Pokeball. Uh, uses Sand Attack on me. Nothing crazy. You don't get any XP from catching Pokemon in this game, which is a little bit unfortunate, but either way, it's not a massive problem. We throw the Pokeball, though. We catch the Pidgeotto. First try, again, don't know if it's 100% catch rate or it's just I was lucky on that throw, but either way, we get Pidgeotto, and now our team is three Pokemon big. Next up, we move over to Team Rocket's location. Caterpie does need to battle these and evolve into a Metapod because that is what happens in the Pokemon anime. And so they start doing their intro again. Jesse and James blasting off at the speed of light. All that good stuff. Meowth's also there as well. Just jumps in and starts attacking us. Not happy about this at all. So, of course, we do need to battle them. But this time we actually battle uh, Jesse instead of James. So we have to take on the Ekans this time. Um, also, we have to battle the Meowth as well. Really cool Jesse sprite as well, though. They, like I say, took so much time into these sprites. They look really, really good. And then I'm coming out with Caterpie. Need to evolve it. So, obviously, I've got to take out the Ekans. And, you know, Caterpie actually got something about him. This is an Ekans, which I was a little bit worried about. But Caterpie don't care. You know, he's just tackling like it's going out of fashion and just taking down this Ekans. Absolutely love it. Anyway, we take out the Team Rocket uh, duo, I guess. And then Caterpie starts evolving into Metapod. So that's our first evolution, just like it does in the anime. Takes out Team Rocket, then evolves into Metapod. We're trying to do it as basically as close to the anime as possible. I mean, it, it helps you anyway with kind of your team and everything. But like you have to kind of catch certain Pokemon at certain times and stuff like that. Anyway, Metapod is now on the team. Anyway, next up we come up here and we are greeted by the Samurai, the pincer user who also has a Metapod. It's where the whole Metapod versus Metapod, Harden versus Harden meme comes from. Misty pops up as well. She's saying don't start stealing Pokemon or something. But he's like, I'm not a thief. I'm a samurai. I want to battle you. I'm basically battling trainers from Pallet Town. Like, we've all seen the anime. We know what he's talking about. So, yeah, we have to battle the samurai now. He sends out a pincer, and I have to send out my Metapod. And again, not a great matchup at all. But, of course, in the anime, Metapod does use Harden, and uh, Pincer just cannot break through that rock-hard shell. And so, yeah, we don't get any XP from that. But uh, he then sends out his Metapod. It's just Harden versus Harden. And Misty's just like, why are we being stubborn here why why can't we just let it go it's an even match it's harden versus harden but then out of nowhere the bloody buzzy beedrill start coming down and this is the bit where you have to basically run away from those but of course 
the Beedrill does rob your Metapod. He's just off with him. I'm like, bro, where are you going with my Metapod? But of course, the Beedrill are popping in now. They're, they're coming for me, so I have to dip from them as well. We get into this little kind of hut here uh, with the Samurai. And then the Samurai just kind of starts telling us how we're a terrible trainer. We're a novice. We shouldn't let our Pokemon get caught and stuff like that. So I have to go out and try and find the Metapod. And as you can see, the Metapod is just there chilling with a bunch of Kakuna. And obviously the Beedrill as well. And then Jesse and James pop in and they start trying to catch the Beedrill and catch all the Pokemon and stuff. They disrupt the nest. And then the Beedrill basically chase off Jesse and James. And then I go and pick up Metapod. And then Metapod just evolves into Butterfree. And basically... You just get a free level 13 Butterfree with like Confusion, Sleep Powders, Stun Spore. A really, really cool idea. I like that. And I don't have to bother about evolving Metapod, which is always a bit of a task. And then he Sleep Powders all the Beedrill, just like he does in the anime. And we take out all of them. So, yeah, really, really cool kind of end to that sort of episode of this game. We move on and we make our way to Pewter City. We are greeted by Flint, who of course is Brock's father. We've kind of stepped on his merchandise or something. He's not too happy about it. Uh, he's going to come over and yell at us in a minute, having a go at us for stepping on his rocks. I don't know what kind of rocks they are. I don't know if it's furniture or just things you'd put in your house, but they just look like ordinary rocks to me. But he's not happy about it anyway. He's having a go at us, stepping on his merchandise, all that stuff. And he's basically just telling us that, um, you know, about Pewter City, the just kind of location. He's telling us about Brock, all that stuff. The souvenirs. He's basically trying to sell us them now. And I'm like, bro, I ain't got no money for some rocks. Like, I don't know how he's making a business selling some rocks. But either way, you can't fault him for trying. He's trying to make some money. He has obviously just ditched his whole family, so he does need a bit of does need a bit of dollar to come back and uh, help them all out. We then go up to the poster, and then Misty starts telling us about the Pokemon League and how we have to defeat all the gym leaders and all that. And then obviously it tells us about Brock, who is a gym leader in Pewter City. And then Flint comes in and he's like, "Bro, did you just say you're going to beat Brock? It ain't happening. Trust me, he's going to wipe the floor with you." And then obviously exactly what happens, Brock does destroy us. But yeah, Flint basically tells us where he is and uh ash is like no i'm gonna show him i'm gonna go defeat brock and we're gonna get uh, this boulder badge and i'm gonna be happy about it so after that we pop out of the pokemon center and we start moving on to pewter city gym uh, we then see brock and obviously try and battle him you don't actually battle him at this part of the story he basically just says he basically agrees to your battle but then just destroy you with his onyx you'll see in a second so he basically says how long have i been with that pokemon he's just saying like how inexperienced I am and that I'm never going to beat this gym and stuff. And anyway, it's battle time. I send out Pikachu. He sends out Onyx. And as you can see, it's a complete mismatch. Size of this Onyx, by the way. This thing is massive. Pikachu is running around. He's not having a great time. Onyx goes over to him and starts squeezing the Pikachu. Trying to use Thundershock. Obviously, doesn't affect the Onyx. And so we, we can't win this battle. So Pikachu obviously returns to Ash. And then that's it. That, that's that's the end of the battle. We don't actually battle him, like I say. We have to go and get Pikachu a little bit more powered up. So Brock comes over, telling us that our Pokemon's weak. Come back when we're stronger. All this and that. And of course, now we have to go over to Flint and actually make Pikachu stronger so we can attack it. We find Flint in his little kind of uh, water electric kind of plant thingy i don't know what you call it it's one of those things we just generate electricity and he's basically just telling us that if we hook pikachu up to it we can then make him even stronger so that's exactly what we do we go inside talk to flint we need to hook pikachu up to the wires and then we go outside and then make pikachu stronger after that we go back to brock and i'm thinking that maybe thundershock is going to be like super effective now it isn't it, it still just doesn't affect you just go into a normal battle with brock so going to flint and giving me that electricity doesn't actually help in the slightest a really cool kind of intro to the gym leaders though it shows their anime sprite and then obviously it shows their normal game sprite so yeah leads with a level 9 geodude isn't as strong as normal brock from the red and blue games but as you can see i try a thundershock there and it still doesn't work so i'm like oh damn this is gonna be a bit scary but luckily we just get past the uh, the onyx with sleep powder and confusion because this thing did have rock throw i had to potion up constantly i had to sack off like pidgeo and stuff just to be able to heal up my butterfree but we do defeat brock and he's saying that he lost to me and here you go here is the boulder badge there's no sprinklers or anything like that because obviously that's what happens in the anime and then pikachu's electric attack does a lot more damage but either way we beat brock and we get our boulder badge which also looks really really cool in this game i like how they spin gives me like gen 5 vibes he then also gives me rock slide as well after that, Flint pops in, tells him that he's going to take care of the family, and then Brock can come with us. 
Next up, we're off to Mount Moon, which of course is on the right of Pewter City. And then we find Seymour getting attacked by all of these Zubat and we have to start fighting those. Again, not really a problem from my boy Pikachu. It is level 13 though. We are a little bit underleveled in this game. This game does get a little bit tough. You have to constantly grind up on the Pokemon that pop up. Otherwise, you will be left behind with the levels. Anyway, we take out the Zubat. Clefairy is up there with Seymour and he's basically saying that intruders uh, kind of in Mount Moon and we need to stop them or whatever. So we then go and find uh, the ladders and of course, lo and behold, Team Rocket are back. I feel like I'm running into these every two seconds because as we all know, they pop up in pretty much every single episode of the anime in like the Indigo League. But when you're in the game, they are literally there every five seconds because you're literally smashing through the different episodes. And so, yeah, Jesse and James just back in like every single like two minutes of gameplay. It's really crazy. Anyway, we take out Team Rocket and then Meowth has obviously ran off to the Clefairies. And so we have to go and follow them. And then we find Seymour and Misty and Brock outside this cave and Clefairies also outside this cave. And this is basically the cave entrance to the... The, the, just the really special Moonstone, like the massive Moonstone. So we go in, Team Rocket, of course, making another entrance. They just will not leave me alone. It's not a problem, though. We can easily take those out. Um, and then that's basically that part of the story. So we defeat Team Rocket. Again, they're, they're kind of the same levels and stuff. Not a problem. You have to defeat the Meowth this time as well. Level 15. We actually only just get past this battle, though. Um, he, like, bite flinched me, like, four times in a row. Got very, very unlucky. Uh, but, yeah, we do defeat Team Rocket, James. You do take turns ba basically fighting Jesse and James. Anyway, they're blasting off again into wherever. And then the Clefairy start evolving into Clefable, which is really, really cool. And then they give you a Moonstone as well for kind of completing that part of the game. Because you can catch other Pokemon and evolve them. Obviously, I'm not doing it because I'm trying to play this game as true to the Indigo League as possible. But yeah, you can catch like a Nidorino uh, and then evolve into a Nido King with a Moonstone. Uh, next up, we're obviously over to Ceruli Cerulean City. And Misty's not having any of it because she doesn't want to go there because of her sisters and everything like that. Obviously, we don't know that yet. So we pop off to Cerulean, Misty goes a different way, and then we find ourselves in this kind of dojo place, which is a really cool mini game. You basically have to kind of stop on the green in the middle, and if you get like enough, you basically get like a high score. And then it says in the game that the creator was going to make like a leaderboard. There isn't one yet, um, so I don't know if that's going to be something that we can see in the future. And then we also have this guy here that sells houses. So I don't remember that happening in the Pokemon anime, but you can also buy houses. I don't know how much money you need. Anyway, next up we go over to Officer Jenny. She's telling us that we've returned to the scene of the crime and there cr were criminals and stuff and that somebody's also stolen this massive vacuum thing, which is, of course, what Team Rocket used in Cerulean Gym to kind of, like, suck all the Pokemon up. Um, but, yeah, we'll obviously show the Pokedex, show them that we're innocent and all that. We then move over to Cerulean City's gym and we are greeted by the sisters and they're basically telling us that these kids from Pallet Town have been coming all day and they've basically defeated us and we've got no Pokemon left. We only have, like, this gold Dean and uh, so they warp into the gym and after that we just got to follow him because it's going to be very easy Misty then pops up and she's like nah not on my watch we ain't giving these cascade badges out like they can be I'm gonna battle lash I'm gonna prove to my sisters that I am the bee's knees and we are going to uh, we're gonna make them we're gonna make them pay you know she's not happy with them she wants to be accepted by her sisters they're basically telling us that I'm a boyfriend or something it's not the case anyway next up we start battling Misty and again same kind of thing as Brock anime sprite and then into a normal game sprite she sends out a level 16 star which is a little bit unfortunate we just get past this battle and when I say just I mean this is ridiculously close like the amount of potions I had to use in this battle was a bit ridiculous we do defeat the Starmie though and then yeah the team rocket kind of just come in with the big vacuum tank thing uh, which is uh, quite funny. I quite like the sprites. Uh, the Meowth one is a, a favorite of mine. Anyway, Pikachu just destroys them, blows them out of the gym again like usual with a thunder shock and then they give us the uh the cascade badge for uh winning i mean i did beat the gym leader anyway but they say we're getting the badge just because we helped him out with team rocket and i'm like bro i actually beat misty but obviously in the anime you don't next up we have to move over to uh the right and this is where a lot more kind of like mini storylines start happening with like the school and Bulbasaur's hidden village and stuff like that and uh yeah this is a really cool portion of the game so we start moving on and we find AJ who is of course um like a small little gym leader who's got this like little tent and this little battle gym area and he's trying to get 100 wins and then he's going to set off on his own adventure and we are going to be his like 99th win or whatever he's got 98 wins as you can see he's got the little scoreboard there AJ pops up and he's like oh dude I'm AJ are you my 99th victim all right let's battle and step side let's go do all this stuff and then we basically hop onto the gym battle he sends out his sanshu and uh, i thought this was going to be an okay relatively easy battle challenger aj sends out sanshu it's level 37 it's level 37 
And I'm like, wait, what? How how do I even beat that? I, I don't even know what I can do. It just absolutely annihilates uh, Pidgeotto. I get a sand attack off though, which is quite nice. Jarabal doesn't do a ton, but yeah, then he like slashes me or something and just absolutely destroys. It doesn't even matter, he's dead. But we do get past the sand shoot somehow with like poison powders, all this and that, sand attacks. I got a ton of XP and I'm feeling good. I'm like, we beat the sand shrew. And then AJ bloody brings out level 28 Rattata. I'm clearly way too under leveled for this battle. But then I remembered in the anime, you're actually supposed to lose the battle. You're not actually supposed to win this one at all, which is why the levels are so high. But I mash catch him. I ain't, win, I ain't losing this battle. And I actually end up winning against the level 37 Sanshu, a level 28 Rattata, and a level 29 Butterfree. We do pull it out. We get a ton of XP, which is obviously really, really nice because we were relatively underleveled in terms of the kind of trainers we were taking on. And then AJ just started saying, Haha, <laughs> you lost, that was easy and all, even though I did win. So you are supposed to lose that battle, but even if you win, it still does the exact same thing. So obviously his wins got up to 99. I was obviously in a different battle because I'm pretty sure I just schooled this guy. Made him actually look a little bit silly, really, with my low-level team destroying his. And then obviously he goes into the tent. You then see all the different kind of training resumes and stuff that these Pokemon have to take on. And then some more anime pictures just showing his love for Sanshu, all the different kind of times they've been together and all the different training they've been doing and all this and that and uh Sanchu just kind of running around in the background helplessly he needs someone help him aj turn around and give him a pokemon snack or something like he's he's been trained crazy brock then comes up and starts asking what kind of food he gives to the pokemon you know he's not actually helping ash out at all ash is like come with me i'll treat you better and the pokemon are like nah, not happening anyway next up team rocket obviously pops up once again and then uh, Sanshu just literally destroys them, makes quick work of them. They send out all the Pokemon, boom, down goes the Ekans. <laughs> I love the little kind of like squiggly lines they've got on the eyes when they're dead. And then Meowth comes out as well. He tries biting the armor, but obviously dies as well. Well, doesn't die, but gets destroyed. And then Coughing's fainted. Like, basically, Team Rocket blasting off again, just like usual. After that, they then uh, obviously get 100 wins. So they start saying, okay, now it's time to start my journey. And then all's well that ends well. We're all friends now, saying that we're going to battle again in the future, all this and that. Um, and that's just a really nice send-off for that episode. So, once AJ has been defeated or AJ's storyline is over, we then move over to this foggy wood where we have to go and collect firewood. We're lost. Brock is making a campfire. Misty's helping. They're making food or whatever. Like I say, I've got to go get some firewood. So, off I pop to try and get some. And again, you don't have to walk very far in this game. It's very, very linear with like the stories and stuff. And we, of course, come across this guy on the treadmill trying to answer Pokemon questions with all of the other kind of trainers or, I guess, students of this school. It's basically the school where, you know, in the anime, Giselle basically says Pikachu should be like level 25 or whatever. And then, yeah, this guy, dude, help him, bro. He's literally, he's not looking all right. Someone help him. So obviously Ash comes over, Misty comes over, Brock comes over. We start talking about the school and stuff. The fact that like two gym badges is the same as like a beginner student. And uh, they're just going through all the classes and explaining the school really and what happens there. And how once you pass the school, you can then take on the Pokemon League without actually having to get any badges. Again, exactly the same as it is in the anime. Uh, next up, Misty does decide to battle Joe. And as it happens in the anime, she absolutely destroys him. He does send out a Weeping Bell against Misty Stormy. But of course, because Misty is the Cerulean uh, City Gym Leader. We ain't losing to a Weeping Bell today. No, sir. And absolutely annihilates Weeping Bell. Joe's like, bloody hell, how? I'm a grass type. How's that happened? And then, of course, Misty's like, it's the way you train your Pokemon. Yada, yada, yada. That's why you lost. Next up, Giselle pops up behind him and just explains why he lost, just saying that, obviously, Misty's a gym leader and that's why she easily beat him. And then next up, she sends out a Graveler and just sends Starmie flying through the window, like, absolutely gone. Teleports her back to 1938. Honestly, just gone through the cracked window. And then, obviously, everyone jumps outside and Misty's like, oh, God, Starmie, I hope you're all right after taking that massive hit through the window. I mean, I don't know a world where a Starmie loses to a Graveler, but, you know, in the anime, anything can happen. So, yeah, Starmie's lights out. You can actually see the cracked kind of gemstone as well, which is really cool. And next up, we, of course, have the battle with the Cubone. And I'm hoping here this isn't another ridiculous high level. It's level 24, which, again, is pretty high compared to my low level Pokemon. Like, my Pikachu is only level 18. Uh, he does go for, like, Bone Club and stuff. So, obviously, I have to go into my Butterfree because I'm flying type and I'm immune to ground type attacks. And, uh, and then we can just easily beat it just with like poison and confusion. Literally, the amount of times I poison and confuse Pokemon in this game is a bit ridiculous. Cubone starts crying. Giselle's like, bro, what's going on? None of the textbooks said this. How has this happened? 
And then after that, uh, Joe's just kind of talking about how it might have been a cool fluke and whatnot. And then, of course, Jesse and James are back at it again. Like, I am not blowing this out of proportion when I say how many times these guys pop up. Like, it's actually, I mean, obviously you're watching it as well, but it's actually crazy when you're playing it. Anyway, the students go take out Team Rocket. Giselle pops off. Joe pops off. And then that's another episode finished. All's well that ends well there. Next up, it's on to the episode of Bulbasaur's Hidden Village. And as this one starts, we do have Misty trying to catch this wild Oddish. Ash and Misty squabbling about who's going to catch it. Misty wants it, even though she's a water type trainer. And then she sends out a Starmie. Water guns the Oddish, destroys it. Like, this Oddish has seen better days, and then she goes to catch it, but then boom, out of nowhere, Bulbasaur is like, bro, get off my mate Oddish, what do you think you're doing? Ash is like, oh bro, that is a Bulbasaur, I want that bad boy, and so he tries to catch it, but of course they then flee, and then after that we're on a bridge, Brock saying that we can't find it on the map, and then boom, out of nowhere, just breaks through, and yeah, Brock's just <laughs> slowly falling down the stream. Like, it's actually crazy how much this ROM hack has literally followed the anime. Like, props to the creator. They did such a good job. Next up, Misty, the silly sausage, falls into a bloody hole. So I have to pick her out of that. Not fun at all for her. She's screaming at me like, get me out of this bloody hole. So we do that, and then we carry on. And then um, a little bit later, we do, of course, fall into the big trap. Uh, the one that just kind of like the net, I guess, that just throws you up into the tree. And uh, then Bulbasaur comes out and starts laughing at us as well, using those emojis and stuff. The, the, the net starts shaking. Bulbasaur's over here. He's, he's like, help us out, Bulbasaur, please. I need your help. And then Bulbasaur's like, nah, bro. Let me just emoji all over you. And then he dips off. And then after that, we're just stuck. But luckily, um, Brock does come over and save the day. And he does say, uh, you know, what are you doing up there? Let me cut you down, etc. They're, they're just wondering what happened to him because maybe he's fell down the river and, you know, something's happened to him with his crazy imagination. But yeah, here he is to save the day. And then he takes us to the hidden village. And as you can see, all of the injured Pokemon are here. And Brock's basically just telling you what Melanie does. And she basically heals these Pokemon. She feeds them. And it's a really nice safe space. And uh, yeah, honestly, cannot fault the sprites in this game. Like even Melanie, like the sprite is really, really well done. So again, massive props to the creator. And then after that, Bulbasaur is just like, bro, get out of my village. What are you doing here? And uh, Ash is like, bro, I'm not going to catch you later. Don't you worry about that. But uh, yeah, Melanie's just saying that Bulbasaur is just the protector of this village. And he's just helping out. And he just doesn't like trainers. And that's why he wants us to leave. But you know what happens next. Team Rocket, as always, are going to pop up again literally two minutes later and then uh they, there is this like weird blow machine thingy but yeah the sprites just look really really funny <laughs> anyway they're still in the machine and look how small me is <laughs> jesse as well anyway uh bulbasaur of course jumps onto the roof uh, and then obviously you jump out with uh, with Pikachu as well. The Vine Whip, of course, takes out the, uh, the the big machine. They fly off once again, blasting off again. And then Bulbasaur's, he likes you again. He likes you now. You know, you've helped him out and he basically wants to come with you. You have to battle him in this. You can't catch him though. You actually have to defeat him because I did try to throw a Pokeball and it didn't work. It just said that you couldn't catch him or whatever. So you do have to beat the Bulbasaur. You beat him though and then you obtain him, which is all good. Goes to box one though because I've just caught some random mons that just I used for healing. So I could just switch into them to heal against like the gym leaders and stuff. Which is fair because this game does get a little bit difficult. Anyway, next up we find Charmander, the stray Pokemon on this rock. Um, which of course is Damien's Pokemon. And uh, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with his body. Like that don't look right to me. I think he needs some help. But uh, either way, he's obviously on the rock. He's waiting for Damien. You try and catch it. It doesn't work. He's just obviously bats it away and stuff. He is very injured, as you can see. He turns his head. It looks pretty healthy. And then uh, after that, the storm starts. And then we go over to the Pokemon Center. And then I don't know what's happened here. But Damien has turned into a PC. And yeah, this is, I think, a little bit of a bug in the game. But yeah, this this PC is is supposed to be Damien. And it's just it's just talking to him. He's just talking to the squad. They're all laughing. You know, obviously he's telling them how he left the Charmander and stuff. And then we go over. We tell Damien that he's a terrible trainer and that he needs to go back for the Charmander. And then Damien just, he just walks out. He's just showing all the different anime pictures. Whatever. I, I love that though. I love a little joke like that. I think it was a bug, but either way, Damien's a PC. Uh, next up, uh, Nurse Joy goes over to the the back, and we go back to try and save the Charmander. He is of course there was a little leaf bless him need to save him so Sparrow comes out we do take out the Sparrow it's level 22 though again a little bit under leveled on the old Pikachu need some more levels I do find a couple of rare candies but I haven't used them yet because I feel like I'll need them later on in the game but either way we do take out the uh, Sparrow and Brock runs off with Charmander 
uh, hiding his light tail from the, the rain. And then we run back down and straight into the uh, back into the Pokemon Center, which again looks really, really cool. Again, cannot fault the sprites in this game. They look so good. Charmander's there on the bed. It needs help. Nurse Joy's like, how could you let it get into this condition? Nash is like, bro, it's Damien that left him with him. We're, we're the ones helping him out here. We're the heroes. Brock's like, bro, I'm begging you, please help this Charmander. I'm, I'm, please help this Charmander. That's what he wants. Which I'm surprised that Brock didn't get him, to be fair, because he was the one that like was standing outside the room all night and all that. Anyway, Charmander's healed. Nurse Joy calls us in. And, of course, Charmander has escaped. And we have to go after him. He's gone back to the rock looking for Damien. Brock's like, I'm going to go find it. And then we follow him. And then, of course, Charmander takes out Team Rocket. And there's Damien's actual sprite. He's not a PC anymore. He's a changed man. And Charmander destroys Damien. Uses Fire Blast or Flamethrower or whatever. Sends him packing. And then Brock and Ash are kind of talking about who gets the Charmander. And Brock gives him to Ash. Which, again, is obviously... The rest is history with Charizard and all that stuff. So we do catch Charmander. Don't have to catch him. He just joins our team, which is really cool. And then we get a new Pokemon. And that is where the game ends. You cannot go further. Teddy Ursa is here saying, how did you like Demo 1.5.8? It's way smaller. And uh, they basically need to work on the next one. The only unfortunate thing is, I don't think there's been an update to this game for a solid, like, two years. Which is really, really unfortunate. Because out of, like, all the ROM hacks I've played of... Ash's journey. This has been my favorite so far. Like, it's better than Ash Grey, Fire Ash. It's so, so canon to the anime. And uh, it's a shame that they've stopped working on it. But either way, it's a really cool ROM. If you enjoy, drop a like, subscribe. And until next time, peace.